the axe has been in existence for a very long time, going back thousands of years, starting with the handheld stone axe and ending up with the designs we see today. In this part of introduction to axes, I would like to take a look at some of the developments that occurred in the evolution of the axe. Primarily, I will focus on the innovations that occurred once the axe reached North America. The first metal axes to reach North America were something like this, a very European design, this one being a good representative of those models. They were the ones mainly in use during the 16th and 17th century in Northern America. There are several defining characteristics of uh, this axis. The first and most major one is the absence of any pole. As you can see, the axe is completely rounded off. It's a piece of metal that starts on one side, then wraps around with a harder piece of iron sandwich in between and forge welded. This lack of a pole creates a very bit heavy axe. As you can see when balanced, it falls completely down. This creates a lot of wobble during a swing and can decrease accuracy rather significantly. Another feature which is a result of the design itself is that you have a very round wide eye. This prevents the head from passing to wood completely with any degree of ease. That is why you often see this elongated bit which is designed to chop into wood without the eye ever reaching it. The handles on these axes were put on by the end user and were often just a branch which was shaped and on which the head was inserted. A very popular variation of those early axe designs is this. They were not very popular in Europe but took off in America with trappers, explorers, and particularly Native American tribes. This is what's often referred to as a tomahawk. Exact same design as the larger axe, simply much smaller, easier to carry. In the late 1600s and early 1700s, we start to see one very specific development on some axes. This one, in all other respects, resembles the axe we looked at earlier to a 16th, early 17th century axe. The one thing, however, that is different is that there is a small pole that has been forge welded to the back of the axe. This pole does nothing to balance out the axe. As you can see, it is still extremely bit heavy. However, this flattened surface allows for the axe to be used as a hammer. Of course, there is not an intended use of the axe, but once you give an axe to a person, the first thing they will do with it is chop, the second is hammer something. This introduction of a pole eventually led to this axe design, what is often called the American felling axe. There are several major changes which have occurred between the prior designs and this one. The first thing you will notice is that now the pole is significantly heavier. This pole functions to create balance in the axe. In fact, on American felling axes, or what came to be known as the American felling axe, it is not uncommon to see a pole that is heavier than the bit itself. This solves the wobbling problem during a swing, greatly increasing accuracy. The next feature is that there's no longer a wide eye which serves to prevent the axe from penetrating the wood. It is one continuous smooth surface on each side of the axe. Here you can see the pole is a, protrudes a bit that is simply because somebody has used it as a hammer in the past without much regard for the axe and has damaged it. As a result of this tapering, the eye has become much narrower, in most cases very triangular. Here you can see it being very oval but still extremely narrow. This general design will eventually give us the modern axe. In fact, all of the characteristics of the modern axe can be found here. This axe is still being produced in the exact same manner as its predecessors. Metal is being bent over with a harder piece of metal sandwich in between to form the bit. A pole has been forge welded in the back. The handle is still being put on by the end user. However, at this time, we start to see noticeable use of the curved handle of this particular design, the Fawn's foot, which we see on almost all modern axes. In fact, this axe has all the characteristics of the current modern axe. It is balanced, it has a pole, it has a narrow eye with smooth continuous cheeks. What you see here is a modern felling axe. 
this one made by Plum. As you can see, is a direct descendant of the American felling axe design that we looked at earlier. It still has the heavy pronounced pole, although these days not as heavy as you would find on an American felling axe. It's usually either the same weight as the bit or slightly lighter. We still have a very well balanced axe. The handle these days is usually provided by the manufacturer, in most cases a curved font's foot design. The eye is still very narrow, with smooth continuous cheeks, which allows for a great chopping axe, as well as splitting, allowing the head to pass cleanly through the wood. Clearly all the features we see here existed on the American felling axe. There are many minor characteristics which we could go through which would distinguish one axe from the other and establish minor roadstones. However, they all go beyond an introduction to axes.